I want to introduce from the infrastructure core team, Elizabeth K. Joseph. Thank you. So thanks for joining us. Sure. And uh, I know you're all on the, uh, the InfraCore team, who is the, uh, the project team inside of OpenStack that kind of oversees and manages the, uh, this, this incredible infrastructure that keeps OpenStack moving forward. Can you tell us um, a little bit about how that works? What, what the, what's set up there? Right. Um, so we have this big CI system, uh, continuous integration. Um, the developers will interact with it through changes to Git, which they push up to Garrett which is a code review system. Um, the code review system um, then uh, triggers a bunch of um, tests to be run. So things are sent off to a tool called Zool. And Zool sends things off to NodePool. And NodePool is where we interact with a bunch of different clouds uh, to run all the tests. OK. So where, um, where are those clouds located? I mentioned that there were you know, 20 regions or something like that. Where, where are they located? Right. Um, so if you look at this map here, um, most of them are in the United States. Uh, we've got one in Europe right now. OK, so uh, a few minutes ago, I put up a slide that had um, you know, 20 regions of clouds just in Europe. That's right. And this is a multi-cloud application. Can we expand this application to, uh, to include some of those clouds in Europe? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got some uh, queued up here. OK, so, cool. Uh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and add some clouds to NodePool. And now, how, how are you going to do this? Um, so it turns out we allow anyone to push changes to our, or to, to propose changes mm -hmm. uh, to our infrastructure. So if you want to do it. OK. Even I can, can you, do this? You can do this. Uh, so we, have you, we have you set up here. We got a, you're in a project config, which is our Git repository. OK. Just make sure I'm up to date. All right. Great. So what, what am I editing? So we're going to edit the node pool configuration, because what we want to do is add these clouds that we've uh, got ready here to node pool. OK. So um, we're going to actually pull down the capacity of some one of the existing clouds that we have in here, because there's a lot of them. We want to push load to these new clouds. OK. So this um, is? This is the OSIC Cloud One. So OSIC is one of our donors. Uh, they donate a lot of cloud to us right now. So we're just going to drop them to zero for this demo. All um, right. And this is in production. So if anyone is pushing changes um, right now, you're probably not because you're here, right? But uh, <laughs> if you were, you'd be interacting with this thing that we're doing the demo on. So that's pretty fun. All right. So we've dropped that to dropped zero. Dropped to zero. Uh, now we're going to add the, the three clouds um, that we have donated for this demo. So the first one um, is uh, data centered. OK. Um, so each one of these clouds gave us a quota. So them, we're going to add 10 servers. Uh, next one is City Cloud. Uh, they give us three regions. Three so, regions, OK. Yeah, so in uh, So where was the, the data center cloud? Where was that one? That was in uh, Manchester, I think. Yeah, yeah. right. UK. OK. So this is Frankfurt. Yep, Frankfurt. So they were going to give 50 in each one of these. So in City Cloud. And then in London, another 50. And another 50 here. This is in Sweden. OK. Uh, the final one is EnterCloud Suite. Um, the quota here for uh, their, which one is this? This is uh, Amsterdam, uh, 12. Okay. Yep. And then another Frankfurt, uh, 11. And in Milan, uh, 10 here. OK, so that was seven regions that we, and this is, you know, we had this config file that we had the, the entries, but this is basically just um, you know, defining a region, some images that are there, and right now we are activating them. Right. All right. Uh, just want to commit this change and push it up to Garrett. Okay, that looks good. Have a commit message so we know what we did later. <laughs> And this process that I'm going through, this is the process that all OpenStack changes go through. That's correct. That's right. Yep. OK. So I use git review, which yep. pushes it to that Garrett review system that you were talking about. Yep. And now since this runs some tests, I did actually do these steps and, and push a review uh, just a couple of minutes ago that, that, uh, that will uh, have already completed the initial set of tests, I think. And look at it here. Yep, looks okay. good. So 
Um, but you know, if we look at this, we should uh, see those changes that, that I just made. OK. And uh, it's now in the review process. So what right. happens at this point? Uh, so now it needs to be reviewed by a couple of core reviewers. OK. Um, well, I see a couple right there, yeah, Clark all. Boylan and Jeremy Stanley. <laughs> Will you guys uh, approve my review? I, I think I followed the process. <laughs> Please? <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. so <laughs> so they, uh, oh. <laughs> and uh, Dirk Mueller said that it looks good for a keynote. <laughs> I mean, this, one of the things that's interesting here is a lot of people may not realize that this is, you know, this is what, we, we're on production systems right now. So this is the same review system that, that every change from OpenStack goes through, and if you go and you look through review.openstack.org, you'll see this, but also lots of other work going on. Um, so this change has been approved now, and sometimes people say, well, you know, open source, isn't that a little scary that anybody can just, like, make changes to the code? But that, this is, you know, I think one of the, the really cool things about the system that we've built up over the last few years. Yeah. So how, how does that work? You know, it, it, it's firing off some tests now, right? Right. So it ran an initial set of tests um, called check tests. Um, once those come back, that's when normal humans usually review the code. So they know that <laughs> okay. all, all the computers think it looks good, mm -hmm. and then we can start taking a look at it. So it comes back in the check queue, people review it, and then it goes through a final queue, which is what this is going through now, the gate queue, um, which is making sure that nothing changed since the check, maybe uh, adding a, a few different tests. Um, okay. And then it gets merged into the repository, and then and there. And this is happening, you know, on a continuous basis, right? I think that, uh, that we have this stat here. It says 2,000 jobs per hour. <laughs> right, right. And, and uh, this is a, a graph that uh, kind of shows how that, uh, how that works, right? Yeah, so this is from the end of September. Um, people are doing a lot of changes at this time, uh, trying to get ready for the release. So the, you'll see sort of throughout the day that the numbers go up and down. But this is where we broke uh, 2,000 uh, jobs per hour for the first time, Wow, which is pretty exciting. And, and so what is a job? What is, you know, how is a job defined when you talk about that? Right, so a job can be anything from a simple linting test to make sure that the code looks good um, from sort of an aesthetic and policy point of view um, to things like uh, unit testing and uh, functional testing and then integration testing, which will actually bring up an entire instance of OpenStack and make sure that you know, a change to one project, say Nova, didn't break something in Neutron. Yeah. So we make sure that the functional testing is done um, and integration testing yeah. to make sure that and there's upgrade testing and all kinds of jobs that get run through this process. And, right. and actually, I, I have a, I've pulled up the, uh, the job um, status page here. Maybe we can see that quickly. Um, so Zul, you said earlier, is, is kind of the, uh, the, the job manager. And, and right here, I see um, my project config change that they approved. It's passed one test. OK, good. Right. I have one more to go uh, before it gets merged into the system. And you know there are a bunch of other things happening in here also. Yeah, so if you look at the first column, those are uh, jobs that are in the, the check queue. So again, that's the first initial check. Mm -hmm. um, you're looking at the gate queue right now. It's pretty small, again, because we're all here. We're not pushing changes. Um, and then there are several other, other queues um, for different sorts of jobs. Like after it's merged, um, say if it's a doc documentation job, it may publish that job. Um, if it's something that's related to a website, it may publish the website or um, okay. upload some, some tarballs somewhere or something. So where is all of this running? Uh, so this um, is running in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> in the cloud. Uh, in those... Yeah, uh, OpenStack-based instances um, that we have donated to the, the infrastructure project. Um, so we interact with them um, completely through the OpenStack APIs. And um, once we get them running, um, you know, configuration management to manage all the fleet of servers that we're running these on. Yeah. And uh, how, many, uh, how many nodes are, are running through? Um, through these systems as, as we uh, are running all of these tests constantly throughout the day. Right. So um, right now, we have over 2,000 um, instances available to us. Um, at the beginning of the year, it was around 1,000. Um, so in the past couple of cycles, we've added a lot of capacity. And this is all because of companies donating clouds to the infrastructure project. OK. Um, so which, which of those companies? 
Right. Um, so we have we have a few right now. They've sort of come and gone, different ones over the years. Um, but today um, we have uh, Rackspace. Um, they've been a long time contributor. They've been around pretty much the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, OSIC. Um, they're the ones that we just pulled out to do this demo because okay. they actually donated. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll they, put you back later. <laughs> their capacity is pretty huge. Um, so they they would you, all the jobs would go to them probably instead of our new clouds that we just uh -huh. added. Um, we also have something called InfraCloud, um, which is run on uh, a hardware donated by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And that is uh, hardware that uh, we're running OpenStack on in the OpenStack infrastructure project ourselves. So we're running that okay. um, as our own. Sort of so cloud. you are a public cloud user, and in that case, it's kind of a, a hosted private cloud that you guys are operating yourself. That's right. And we're kind of, it, it, it's a bit of an experiment. We're trying mm -hmm. to sort of dog food OpenStack, make sure we can actually run it instead of just being consumers of OpenStack. Um, as an, so that's, that's the InfraCloud uh, from HPE. Um, uh, InterNAP is also one of our providers. Um, and then we also have um, the one in Europe, of course, um, uh, OVH right now. So okay. They've been and really so OVH was that, uh, OVH has, has multiple locations, right? Right. In, in the US or, or Canada, or are they, they, I think that they have a couple locations over there. And then yeah. they were also the, the, one in the, the current dot in, uh, in, in Europe, which was right. in France. Yep. So I've been, I've been checking the status here, and uh, it looks like my, uh, my test has, has run through, and uh, uh, if yes. I look over here, my change has merged. So when a change gets to this state, you know, mm -hmm. I, it, I pushed it, it's reviewed, automatically tested, what, uh, what, what happens then? Uh, so once it's, it's merged, um, it depends on the project. So in the case of OpenStack Infrastructure, this project, um, it'll get shipped off to our server, which mm -hmm. will then pick up the configuration and start adding the clouds. Okay. So we have a, a status page over here that I think, you know, it looks like it's not, right. hasn't, hasn't, oh, actually. Oh, so yeah, so we have some uh, cloud, just got picked uh, some, up. some instances building over in City Cloud. Um, so this will, this will take, you know, a couple minutes. It's going to build some instances, and you'll see from these columns here, there's uh, building, and that's where it starts uh, preparing the instances. Um, once they're ready, they'll show up in the ready column. Um, and that means they're available for testing, running tests on. Um, in just a moment, we'll see some in the in use column. Uh, that'll be the ones that are actually actively running tests. So if you were to push a change right now to this, to anywhere in OpenStack, really, um, your change will probably end up in the in use column right here. Okay. Um, so we've got them building in all three. Um, all three. Uh, so and we had three regions that we added for City Cloud, one for data centered, and three for for Inter Cloud. Right. So those are, um, you know, all, all in different locations. And, uh, you know, we had, we had prepped this config file beforehand, but in order to, to change the application that drives all of the CI, we only had to change two files, right? right. We, we had the node pool file that, that we looked at earlier, and there was one other one, which was, where was that one? That was in uh, system uh, yeah. config. Right. Uh, and then it was in uh, modules, uh, OpenStack project, templates. Uh, node pool, and then it was uh, clouds.yaml.erb. So this is a, a Ruby temp a template for Puppet. Okay. Um, but if you scroll down to the yeah the bottom of the file there. Um, okay. So I see I see the three clouds here, and this is this is really the the configuration that we had to add in order to expand capacity to, to new clouds. Right, so our infrastructure has support to just adding a few different pieces of information. So here you can see there's authentication information, um, as well as we, we, we name it, we give the region. Um, and in, in certain cases, uh, like in one, we wanted to use the, uh, let's see, it was in, uh, it was a, uh, Enter Cloud, we're using a different uh, Glance API version. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, in Data Centered, we're using a slightly different uh, uh, Keystone identity uh, provider uh, version of the API. So we'll, we'll make certain tweaks um, mm -hmm. based on performance or what the cloud supports, and we're able to do that. So right now we've got uh, cool. this uh, view here. We've got some. So the, what we have here is seven regions that we just turned on, three new clouds, two config file changes, and uh, in a couple of minutes, they've gone from not being part of this fleet, as you mentioned earlier, you know, to now running test jobs in production for actual work that's happening on OpenStack. That's right. That is, uh, that's pretty awesome. So <laughs> we, uh, I think we have, a, we have a, a final slide over here that, uh, that kind of shows what, uh, what infra looks like now in Europe. Right. And, uh, and we have, 
We've added, um, as I said, you know, seven new regions uh, in, in Germany, UK, Sweden, the Netherlands, and Italy. And all of that in just a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing that I, I want to just mention before we wrap up is all of the tools to do this are also open source, right? Absolutely. Yep. If you go to get.openstack.org, it's all on there in the infrastructure repositories. Yeah. And there are some other companies who are using these to do, uh, to do their own CI systems across multiple clouds. Yep. And so you know, it's great, because this is an example of where you know, the, our community has built up amazing tooling, amazing infrastructure. And, uh, and we use it, obviously, but other people benefit from it as well. Right. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, for, uh, for joining us. And thank you to the Infra team for, uh, for letting us play with your, uh, your cloud in production. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.